a good morning today we will discuss about a uh, waves and sounds this is our first chapter in the second semester right so in first semester you learn about uh, oscillations and uh, different different types of motions oscillation of an isolated object what happens in that system if the isolated oscillations makes oscillations if you take a system of isolated number of isolated uh, atoms are collected together what happens to such objects right so a material medium provides an example for such situations elastic forces binds the constituents to each other in a matter or in a system elastic forces binds the constituents to each other therefore the motion of one affects that of another the motion of one particle affects the another particle right if you drop a pebble a small stone in pond in a pond of still water the water is constant still and drop a small stone or a small pebble into the water then water waves water surface gets disturbed if you put your finger in a tank the water is steady there is no change in the water or movement in the water the water surface is steady and the total whole the water is steady then put your finger and disturb it then the disturbance does not reform, remains confined to one place it propagates outward along a circle if you continue dropping this small stones in a pond you are sitting on the bank of a pond and you are dropping a small stones in the pond you see the circles rapidly moving out outward from the point of where the surface is disturbed bit disturb here this is the the point uh, this is the this point is a disturbing point so the waves are moving going away from the disturbing point right this happens in the water if you observe in this case you put up a thermocol sheet small piece of a thermocol and this area any point of area put here this is the disturbance the water is moving away from the disturbing point here it is not confined to one place it is propagating outward if you are continuing the circles rapidly moves outward these are the circles you are seeing here rapidly moving outward it is though the water is moving outward from the point of disturbance right if you put a cork piece piece of cork or a thermocol small sheet at this point put here it moves the piece moves up and down the piece moves up and down but it does not move in this direction so this shows that the mass of the water does not moving outside in the circle the mass of the water is not moving away from the circle the mass of the water moving here only right and when you speak a speaker is here right some energy moves outward from the source of the sound without any flow of air from one place to another place from this area the speakers the air is not moving from here to here but where you are here the observer is here 
he can listen the sounds the disturbances produced in air are much less obviously and only our ears are, can detect our microphones can detect them this type of uh, disturbances disturbances which moves without the actual physical transformation transfer our flow of matter as a whole is called a wave the disturbance which moves the disturbance is moving but the actual physical matter is not moving this type of a flow is called as a wave the disturbances which moves without the actual dis- actual physical transfer or the flow of matter as a whole are called as a waves these waves uh, transfers the energy and momentum these waves are trans transfer the energy and momentum so the disturbance information this disturbance has information of its propagation from one point to another point all the communications essentially depends on the transmission of the signals via waves right speech means we produce sounds in air and hearing amount of their uh, detection we have the different different types of uh, waves not all waves here so for example sound waves may be first converted into uh, electrical signal which in turn may generate an electromagnetic wave that may be transmitted through vacuum air cable or any medium to a receiver detection by a receiver of a original signal will usually involves the the steps in the reverse order right so all the waves requires a medium not not all the waves requires a medium for their propagation we know that the light waves can travel through vacuum the light emitted by the sun or stars which are hundreds of light years away from the earth reaches us through the interstellar space which is practically vacuum the most familiar waves such as uh, waves on a string water waves sound waves seismic wave etc these are comes under the mechanical waves these mechanical waves requires a material medium to propagate them without medium mechanical wave does not move it requires medium for propagation they cannot move through a vacuum these mechanical waves involves oscillations of constant particles and depends on the elastic property of the body elastic properties of the medium right these mechanical waves and uh, we have different other types of waves that they are uh, electromagnetic waves these electromagnetic waves do not require any material medium they can travel through the vacuum also and we have third kind of uh, waves uh, they are called as matter waves these matter waves associated with constituents of matter for example electrons protons neutrons and atoms and molecules these constituents these are the matter waves in this chapter we will discuss about the uh, mechanical waves mechanical waves requires a material medium for their propagation the influence of waves on earth right here we have different types of waves these mechanical waves based on their movement of a particle in a field for example take a tuning fork and vibrate it the particles are tuning vibrating tuning fork disturbs the air so air air passes in the 
parallel direction if speaker is on then the air is disturbed uh, in front of the speaker right so here density varies from point to point observe this the, here the we, sound wave which is the disturbance is moving in this the same direction this direction and particles also moving in this direction based on the movement direction particle motion direction of the particle motion these waves are divided into two types one is a longitudinal wave another one is a transverse wave one is longitudinal wave another one is a transverse wave for example you stretch a spring or compress the spring this is a spring you are compressing when you release it it moves in this direction right the wave is moving in this direction that type of waves are called as a longitudinal waves the longitudinal wave in which the direction of the vibrating particle is parallel in which the direction of vibrating parallel particle is parallel to the direction of the propagation of the wave observe here the direction of wave is right from left to right the wave is moving in this direction and particle also moving in this direction only in a cycle stand in a cinema hall or any other place or in college if you push a cycle consider the cycle is a part single particle if you push it all the cycles fall down in a queue you are in a queue in a mess or in a other place if someone pushes from back all the students will bent forward and they come back right this happens in the longitudinal waves so wave is moving front and particles also moving front but actual particle is not moving from here to there the particle transmits the energy and momentum from one place to another place this type of uh, the waves are called as a longitudinal wave in longitudinal waves compressions and refractions occurs compression refraction means see this the speaker is a sound producer these are the air molecules are the disturbed and the air molecules are moving the wave is propagating in the in this direction in this direction the and particles also moving in this direction only right the particles also moving in this direction so observe these areas here the density is more and uh, these are the higher density areas and you can see these these are the lower density areas this higher density area is called as a compression compressed so right density is more and lower density area is called as a refractions compressions and refractions compressions and refractions occurs in a longitudinal wave the examples for the longitudinal waves sound waves are the longitudinal waves and vibrating string a vibrating for example a string is vibrating in this direction this also produces uh, longitudinal waves seismic waves primary seismic waves are the longitudinal waves right and the longitudinal wave the distance between successive points are one compression and refraction makes a complete one refraction and one compression makes a complete wave here observe this from here to here from this point to this point a complete Re compression and complete refraction from here to here right this is a it makes complete wave the distance between one compression 
and successive compressions the distance between two successive compressions or two successive rare fractions gives the lambda wave length of the wave the one com one compression one rare fraction makes a complete wave right one compression and one rare fraction right it makes a complete wave and the distance between two successive compressions or two successive rare fractions gives the lambda wave length of the wave here uh, sound waves and these uh, uh, water sound waves and uh, different uh, seismic waves as uh, waves in a string primary seismic waves ex uh, are the examples for the longitudinal waves these longitudinal waves does not exhibit the polarization that does not exhibit the polarization these waves requires a material medium to propagate through it. and the longitudinal waves can be produced uh, in a solids liquids and gases the distance between two successive compressions or two, uh, two successive rare fractions is gives the wavelength of the wave these longitudinal waves can reflect refract they interfere they diffract but they cannot be polarized so they are they can reflect longitudinal wave can reflect they refract they in get interfere they get diffracted but they cannot be polarized these waves cannot be traveled through the vacuum means the, for the propagation of longitudinal waves we require a material medium we require a material medium to propagate the longitudinal waves and the material medium should have the elastic property and the inertia then only longitudinal wave can move pass through the med medium and next type of uh, waves are the longitudinal transverse waves transverse waves are the waves uh, where the particle is moving up and down are the the direction of the propagation of the wave and the particle movement are perpendicular to each other uh, in earlier example you are dropping a uh, small stones in a pond then the water moves in a circle from the disturbing point right if you put a small car piece or the thermocol piece on the water then it will not move from here to there away from the point of disturbance but it moves up and down it remains there only right so here the particles are moving up and down particles are moving up and down but the wave is moving forward that type of waves are called as a transverse waves the transverse waves can be light waves electromagnetic waves for example here observe this string is pushed and pulled this is the longitudinal it moves the wave is moving in this direction the particle also moving in the same direction but if you vibrate it up and down if you vibrate that in a, this up and down direction this is moving in this direction so particles are moving up and down only but wave is moving in this forward direction this type of uh, waves are called as a transverse waves the transverse wave is defined as the wave in which the direction of the vibrating particle is perpendicular to the direction of the propagation of wave here this is the wave moving in this forward direction and the particles are moving up and down this type of waves are called as a transverse waves in transverse waves crest and trough are formed in transverse waves crest and troughs are formed in between the two successive crests in between the two successive crests are two successive troughs 
the distance is given by the lambda or lambda any distance between any two successive points which are in phase so the distance between two crest or two successive troughs is equals to the wavelength of the wave the light waves water waves and seismic secondary waves and radio waves waves in a string which is fixed from two points these are the some of the examples for the transverse waves transverse wave in transverse waves a crest or a trough makes a complete wave a crest and a crest and a trough makes a complete wave and these transverse waves can propagate through vacuum these waves does not require any material medium to travel or material medium to propagate through it it can transmit through vacuum they can propagate through vacuum these transverse waves exhibits reflects refraction they get interfere they can diffract and also polarization these transverse waves exhibits all the light properties like reflection refraction interference diffraction and polarization they can travel through the vacuum and this can be produced in solids only the light waves or radio waves or the seismic s type waves are the examples for the transverse waves these are the two types of mechanical waves we have and next coming to the characteristics of the wave what are the characteristics of the wave so here in our syllabus we have the frequency wavelength and amplitude a wave can have frequency wavelength amplitude phase but in our here we had the frequency earlier in other classes first semester classes we studied about the uh, what is uh, frequency what is time period what is wavelength right right here we will discuss about the frequency wavelength and uh, uh, amplitude and time period so frequency what is a frequency frequency is nothing but the number of oscillations made per unit time given already we discussed in our earlier classes in this chapter particularly in waves the number of waves produced per unit time or per one second if the wave within a wave within a one unit time or one minute one second waves are produced five then frequency n can be five right so number of waves produced per unit time are in one second is called as a frequency this frequency is reciprocal of time period time period means the time taken to produce a wave this is a one wave the how much time it taken to complete this wave is time period and in one minute or in one second or in unit time how many waves are produced that gives the frequency so this frequency n equals to frequency is represented by 1 n and in sum it is the frequency nu right so frequency is reciprocal to the time period time period is a time taken to complete one wave so units for the frequency are hz are per second you can write it as per second or h hz is a unit for the frequency h in the name of a scientist h right 
the time period is the time taken to complete one wave and frequency is the number of waves produced per unit time the frequency and time period are reciprocal to the each other the time period unit is a symbol it's a time so it's a second and next uh, wavelength in longitudinal waves the compressions and refraction the distance between compression and refraction and in uh, transverse wave the distance between crest and trough successive crest or successive troughs gives the time period wavelength the distance between two successive points which are in the phase same phase are called as a wavelength or in longitudinal wave the distance between two successive compressions or two successive refraction in transverse two successive crest or two successive troughs gives uh, equals to the wavelength right in general the distance between two successive points having the same phase is called as a wavelength wavelength is measured in meters or in centimeters as it's a wavelength is a distance next point is amplitude next character is amplitude amplitude is nothing but the maximum displacement from its mean position the point this is the mean position this is the mean position the wave is moving in this way so this is the maximum displacement zero plus minus this is these are the maximum displacements beyond this it does not move observe this this gives the displacement the maximum displacement of a vibrating particle from its mean position is called as a amplitude amplitude is nothing but the maximum displacement right here we have a relation between these three parameters velocity wavelength frequency right here wavelength is a distance traveled by the particle to complete one vibration and time period is a time taken to complete one vibration and frequency number of vibrations produced by the vibrating body in one second so the velocity is equals to displacement by time so velocity equals to what is the displacement of wave distance of a wave this is a one wave right so from here to here this is the distance covered by the wave is lambda and time taken to complete this one wave is t and within one wave one second how many within one unit time within one second how many the waves are produced that gives the frequency so velocity here v equals to distance v equals to what is the distance here lambda is the distance by time period but what is time period time period is reciprocal to frequency so you can write in time period v equals to lambda 1 by n so that gives v equals to n lambda so the relation between v frequency and wavelength is v equals to n lambda the this is the relation between velocity frequency and wavelength if the waves are propagating forward forward waves are moving from whether it's a transverse or the, the transverse waves are the longitudinal or whatever it may be it is propagating it's a forward forwarded waves if it touches an obstacle at a certain place then what happens if it touches a obstacle then what happens the they reflect back as the longitudinal or transverse both the waves uh, shows the property reflection they can reflect back from the obstacle and they get interfere or they get super position with each other then they cannot move from 
uh, one point to another point. Here, reflection at one boundary, the familiar situation. If a string fixed at either ends of an either ends are a air column in a pipe, two sides are closed, which reflection takes place at two or more boundaries. In example of string wave going to the right and get reflected at one end and which turns uh, and get reflected back to other end. This will go on until there is a steady wave pattern set up on the string. Right? So when the reflection takes place, this process continues till the wave is set to steady. It vibrates but the energy cannot be transmitted. Such wave patterns are called as the stationary waves or standing waves. Stationary or standing waves. Because they cannot move from here to there. There is no phase difference between the collisions of the different elements of the wave. The string as a whole vibrates in phase with different amplitudes at different different points. The wave pattern is neither moving to right nor moving to the left. Hence these are called as the stationary waves. The stationary wave which is formed because of the combination of two identical waves moving in a opposite direction. Moving in a opposite direction. The point at which the amplitude is becomes zero. See these points here amplitude becomes becomes zero. These points are called as a nodes. And where the amplitude is maximum, these points are called as a anti nodes. The successive alternatively node and third node gives the one lambda here successive points successive nodes or anti nodes gives the lambda by 2 only the distance between successive node and anti node gives the lambda by 2 these are the called as a stationary waves now we will enter into the uh, energy which gives the sensation of sound hearing sensation it's a sound no the all the sounds produced by the vibrating body the vibrating body or disturbance occurred in the body it produces waves these waves moves from one point to another point if we get sensation of the vibrating waves we are able to hear it that is called that energy is called as a sound sound is a form of energy which produces by the vibrating bodies sound stimulates our sense of hearing sensory organ hearing it gives a sensation of hearing that is called as a sound the sound can be measured in the decibels sound can be measured in the decibels it is represented by db capital D, small d and capital B. Here all the vibrating bodies are producing some sounds but we are unable to listen some sounds. For example, the shisho we can listen the vibrating grass. Grass is vibrating moving here and there. We are unable to hear the vibrations of the grass and some of the seismic uh, vibrations are the earthquakes we cannot hear we can hear our sensory organ can sensible only the frequencies of in between the 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz if the frequency range of sound is in between 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz then only we can hear the sounds this range is called as a audible range. This is audible range. 
the sound produced by the musical instruments sound produced by the human sound produced by the animals sound produced by the vehicle these are all comes under the audible range due to that frequencies only we are able to hear right we are listening the sounds we are t i'm talking you're listening you are asking some questions i'm listening due to the our frequency ranges produced frequent the sounds of frequencies are within this range only this range is called as a audible range the audible range frequencies are from 20 hertz to 20000 hertz if what happens to the if the range is below than the 20 hertz and maximum than the 20000 hertz then if the sounds are below than the 20 hertz then it is called as a infrasonic sounds infrasonic sounds whose frequency is less than the 20 hertz these are the vibrations of the earth quark are the infrasonics some and if the sounds are more than the 20000 hertz then these are called as a ultrasonic uh, vibrations in a quartz crystal mm, some animals uh, such as dog bats dolphins can hear these high pitched high frequency sounds bats use ultrasonic sounds to see the trees and insects at night we we, we cannot listen we cannot hear these sounds but uh, ultrasonic sounds can be heard by the dogs bats and dolphins and infrasonic uh, sounds also uh, can be heard by the some animals such as elephant whales snakes can generate and they can hear these infrasonic sounds so here in audible range we have some uh, sounds the one sound which is pleasant to listen which is comfortable to hear which has a, a regular frequency which has regular amplitudes that type of sounds are called as a musics which are produced from the musical instruments are sounds produced by a singer and some of the frequencies are audible but they are not in a regular manner they are not comfortable they are not pleasant disturbed you this type of sounds are called as a noise what happens if the two sounds or the two frequencies are moving in a direction nearly equal frequencies then it leads to some increase or decrease in the frequencies right so this type of stationary waves are waves which are moving in same amplitude same phase and everything has same frequencies but opposite in direction but if a nearly two equal near frequencies are moving in a direction they get overlapped they get superimposed they get interfere then sometimes we listen the increased noise and sometimes we uh, in, uh, listen the decreased sound this phenomenon of increase and decrease of the sound frequencies is called as a beat so beats when the two waves of nearly equal frequencies traveling in the same direction are superposed waxing and waning of sound heard alternatively with respect to time this phenomenon is called as a beat the number of beats produced per second is equals to the difference between the two frequencies two frequencies of the waves the persistence of our ear ear is 0.1 second the beats are formed due to the constructive and destructive interference if two waves are of nearly equal frequencies are moving traveling in a direction if they are in the same phase then resultant will be 
more we will get the increased voice if the two waves with the nearly equal frequencies are not in phase then that is called as a destructive interference if the same the two sounds meets in a phase they combine and give the maximum displacement hence we heard the maximum sound this is known as a constructive interference the two waves are working together in one direction it resultant will be more if the two waves sound waves are meeting in opposite phase when they combine they produces minimum displacement one is pulling this direction one is pulling that direction so they produces minimum displacement so we heard lesser lesser sound this is known as a destructive interference one is a constructive interference which gives the more output destructive is less output the constructive of these two continuous interference we will get a beat if the two frequencies are in phase that high increase it is called as a waxing when the two waves are in a different phase we will get a low decreased sound that is vanning the continuously with the time vanning waxing vanning waxing vanning waxing it occurs the increase decrease increase decrease increase decrease in the sound waves sound frequency with respect to time this phenomenon is called as a beat right here we have a different number of uh, applications of beats we had a different different number of applications of beats so first we these beats are used to determine the unknown frequency of a note note mean a single frequency for example sari ga ma pa in the music sari ga ma pa are the individually notes it produces only one frequency that is note you can find out the unknown frequency of a note and beats are used in the theory of music beats are used in the theory of music and the beats are used in the musical instruments beats are used in a musical instruments to beats are used to produce termless effects in a films you can everyone sees um, if you see the a function or in you films you can see the person are uh, fixing the veena guitar right the strings they are fixing and uh, and tabla they produce some sound and they makes uh, uh, they uh, fixes the small small differences right the fixing and the uh, stretching or uh, the tightening the uh, string is tuning to produce the required music and you can you are everyone aware about uh, dj system you are using or you are seeing in uh, films or in any tv programs right they are moving the buttons or switches of the board to produce the required music that is a tuning of the tuning musical for instruments or uh, uh, to production they are using the beats in the uh, production of the uh, good music and produce strumless effects in the cine films the background effects and everything you can see uh, the beats are used uh, in the mines to detect the dangerous gases in recently uh, ancient periods they are used uh, some birds and some other system but now in mines we are using the beads to produce uh, to detect the dangerous gases if the dangerous gases produced in the mine it is very dangerous to them 
workers and to the whole environment also so we are uh, using the beads to detect the dangerous gases produced in the mine according to can act to stop the dangerous gases or to um, um, so order to come out from the mines to the workers and we can determine the unknown frequency of a tuning fork if you have a tuning fork but you don't know the frequency of tuning fork but then you can uh, find the frequency of a tuning fork by using beads right so i hope you got the concepts you understand the topic uh, waves here we discuss the waves uh, what is wave what are the types of wave what are the characteristics of wave what is sound how it produces what are the types of sounds sound is normally which is pleasant is called as uh, music and which is unpleasant which is distributive or which is not regular in amplitude in frequency is called as sound noise and stationary waves and then beats all right so in next class we discuss we will discuss and uh, different different uh, areas of the waves and sounds like doppler effect resonance uh, sub and formula and echoes reflection of sound wave is echo and reverberation multiple reflections the properties of the sounds so how the reflect what is reflection what is single reflection what is multiple reflection right uh, what are the how to reduce the sound in a hall or in an auditorium these are these all the topics will be discussed in a next class thank you thank you everyone